everyone. I wanted to show you this one comment that I got yesterday from the news unit. And press control and plus at the same time if you have trouble viewing this or enlarge the YouTube video function. And over here, just look at it, what he says. And it's regards to my videos called earnings bloodbath, end quote. And what I stated in that video before I go to his comment was that I believe that it just made me a bit worrisome on what was going on in the stock market right now. But news unit says, the companies that matter and are backed by the government are now too big to fail and just keep getting bigger. There's no way the stock market is going to do a reversal as the Fed continues to do a mandate. There's way too much money sitting on the sidelines that will be piling on to the market as the point of least resistance is up. Now let's look at his comment. There's no way the stock market is going to do a reversal as the Fed continues their dual mandate. Okay? When I see something like that, that makes me a bit worrisome when I see it across the board. And I've been seeing that all across YouTube, all across the alternative media, all across CNBC, and the list goes on and on. And the second point I'm going to get to later on or the last sentence of that first paragraph that he wrote. I'm going to get that into a different part of this podcast. But this just makes me a bit worried, and I'll show you some charts that make me a bit worried. Now let's look at this chart. It's by Doug Short. It's the NYSE margin debt and the S&P. And let's just look at it right now. Let's look at the fact that you have a peak at the year 2000, the peak in the year 2007, and the peak at the year 2013. Now let's look at peaks in the year 2000 2007 and 2000 maybe 13 right what do you see similar happening you see peaks right in the red the blue and let's just look at it red stands for the NYC margin debt blue stands for the S&P this is the tech bubble NYC margin debt here in 2007 2008 S&P peak here 2007 2008 same thing here or is that the same thing I'm asking the question 2013 ish in the red with the NYC margin debt and then 2013 and once again with the S&P so it just seems a bit similar right this is what the charts are saying here with the margin debt does it necessarily have to follow the same pattern no it just makes me a bit worrisome alright now let's look at the corporate balance sheets this is what I showed you yesterday and let's look at it again right press control and plus at the same time if you have trouble looking at this Let's look at the year 2000. Peak here in equity value. Peak here in 2007 equity value. What do the charts tell you right now? Is that another peak? That's something to think about, right? Doesn't necessarily have to be a top, but the way that it's looking, if you just even draw a trend line like that, I mean, you could see it over here that could it be potentially close to a top? Maybe. Now let's look at margins on S&P 500 firms. 2000, peak here. 2007, real estate bubble, peak here. What about 2013-ish? Is that another peak? We shall see, but that's just another red flag in my eyes over there. Now let's look at this chart over here. And going back to what the news unit said. Unit, news unit said that, you know what, there is so much money on the sidelines, the Federal Reserve, make sure or wants to make sure that these companies stay too big to fail by ensuring all this liquidity and that's what the market needs in order for it to go up but let's just look at this thing though I mean 2007 right this was August and you have to look at the fact that in August you had the Fed funds rate look let's just go up all the way here Fed funds rate at five and a quarter this was when subprime was blowing down and when subprime was going down, the Fed cut rates, right? And the consensus was that the market would go up because of that. The market did initially go up, though, until October, where the Dow was roughly 14,100, 14,200. And this graph, by the way, is John Taylor's graph in the book, Getting Off Track, which I've displayed before. But what I'm trying to say is that 
the consensus was that there's no way this market's going down. There's so much liquidity in the system, and that's guess what? You had Lehman the next year. The whole system collapsed. Does it mean that we're going to see the whole system collapse now? No, not necessarily. I originally thought that, but I've revised that statement. It could just be a stagflationary, not hellhole, but a stagflationary environment, much like the 1970s. And based on that, it just seems that when you have a consensus saying that, hey, there's no way the stock market's going to reverse, just like in 2007, guess what? All these guys on Wall Street got egg on their face. And it just seems that when you have so many bulls in one direction, who knows? They could get egg on their face again, all these guys on leverage. You have to remember, this system is based upon leverage. It's not based upon a true free market. We have an artificial economy based on phony growth, based on funny money, based on phony accounting valuations, the relaxation of mark to market. This goes on and on and on. But what I'm trying to say is when you have so many guys going in one direction, who knows? The contrary could happen. And there are some newsletters that are saying that, you know what? Maybe it's time to get out or tell my clients to get out. There are some prominent newsletters out there telling their clients to get out. And I asked that question, why are they telling their newsletter, I mean, why are they telling their clients to get out? That, in my opinion, is a red flag. So just remember, when you have the herd going in one direction, doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get this trend continue on in a straight line. And I've learned this the hard way. I've said that before. And when I see guys, especially like Gregory Manorino, saying bubble, 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 and then turning bullish, even though I think he's going to turn bearish soon, based on the conversations that I've had, had with him and the individuals who convinced them to go bullish up until the end of the year. I'm not going to mention who they are. But it just seems that when you see guys turning ship, right, regardless of whether you agree with them or not, that, in my opinion, is a red flag. But those are my thoughts, guys. And share your thoughts below and I'll talk to you another time guys. Thanks a lot.